everybody. Today I'm bringing you this a layout with this collage of photos from my grandson's newborn photo shoot. And I'm going to be using these papers from the Pebbles Special Delivery Boy 6x6 paper pad. It's an older collection and so I don't know if it would it's available anywhere online or in stores any longer, but I did get it at a closeout store. I had pre-selected four papers from that line and um, so I've, I'm going to put these together in just a grid on this 12 by 12 piece of paper. And I just pulled a piece of cardstock from my cardstock stash. I used to use a lot of cardstock on layouts. I don't use so much cardstock anymore. I do ma you make cards, but infrequently, just when I have a birthday or some special occasion coming up. So now I'm putting these papers down and I'm using that dot paper and this really beautiful, lovely navy star paper. And then I have this word paper that I'm going to put down. And I notice there's a gap as I'm putting these down and I'm using a 12 by 12 piece of paper. So what I figured out is those papers really were not exactly six by six. They're a little bit shorter than that. So I now know, I hadn't intended to do this, but I now know that I'm going to have to fill in that gap somehow. And I had luckily saved these border strips from the top of the papers. And those are going to work perfectly for actually filling in those gaps. So I'm just kind of looking at the border strips, trying to decide, I love that gingham one. And then I have that little star, so I love that. I'm gonna use that as well. And I'm using that Memento, Dewdrop Memento Gray Flannel Ink just to ink up the edges of those border strips a little bit, just to help them stand out against all those patterns. And I'll just quickly get that done and get them on. I think I thought my mat wasn't quite straight or right here, so I was playing with that a little bit to get the angle right for you. And what I'm doing is I'm just really eyeballing these strips. The, the collage itself is eight by eight. So it's going to take up a lot of real estate on this page. Sometimes it's nice to do something in an eight and a half by 11 or eight by eight photo collage because there's room for embellishing, but not a ton. And I get these down. This was such an easy solution to this. And I so rarely use my border strips, especially when I'm pulling them from a six by six pad. I don't have a ton of six by six pads, but I do have them. So it's nice when I get to use them. Now I have the package of die cuts as well from the Pebble Special Delivery Baby Boy uh, collection. Those are the die cut cardstock shapes. So I'm going to go to those to try to decide what I want to do. And it has this, um, just die cut baby word that I'm going to use and end up using it as my title. And I loved that little bird. So just because he's such a little baby bird. <laughs> and I also thought, you know, how often am I going to use a bird on a layout? So. What I'm doing right here is trying to decide how I want the word baby to go because I was thinking I really wanted it to cross not completely into the middle, but more into the middle. And then when I look, I really don't like that Y sitting on the border strip, no matter what I do. So I'm going to keep the baby in really pretty much mostly in that left lower quadrant. And then what I did is I'm going to embellish in um, a diagonal, and if you include the word baby, it is a, a triangle of embellishments. So I pulled that, um, pulled that flare from Lawn Fawn, and now I'm showing you how I made my own embellishment there. I used an epoxy circle from the paper studio that I've had a very long time, probably at least a year, when Inky Quill, who's a, De or a Del to me, who's Inky Quill on YouTube, 
made her first circle embellishments. I thought it was a really cool idea because if you don't have the right flair, it's a neat idea, which I didn't have the right flair for this page. And so I did pre-make that ahead of time because I'd kind of not pre-constructed my layout, but I had some ideas of what I was going to use. So what I did is I used that heart punch there, just a piece of paper from the collection and another piece of paper to back the epoxy circle and it's done. Now I have heard that the epoxy circles can yellow over time. So if something, if that's something that's really going to bother you, you know, don't use them. But if you don't care so much, that's fine. And I do have a ton of photos of this young man and his family. So if that one epoxy circle yellows, I'm not going to worry about it so much. So again, to make all of these die cuts stand up off the page a little bit, I'm going to ink them with that gray flannel ink again. I actually didn't pop any of these up off the background, which I'll often do. My dim There's dimension on this layout, but it's not, there's not a ton of it. I think part of it is, is that the papers in the background are pretty busy, but that photo collage, there's so much going on in it. But I love these pictures. It's just a great representation of that photo shoot. And what I'm doing here is I pulled a puffy sticker from the Amy Tangerine Matte Puffy Stickers. It says, With Love. I think it's from Stitched. And I'm going to play with that a little bit to figure out where I want that to go. I've had these stickers for ages. And um, I keep packages of things that I want to use up just to the left side of my desk, right near my elbow. And there's three, or there were three diaper pins on that. One of them blue, one of them like a green color, and one of them a peachy orange color. And so I'm so glad I used the blue diaper pin. Now I just need to use the other two diaper pins. So I think there's two diaper pins and an acorn left on that sheet. So I need to get those used. Might have to use the acorn on like some sort of foresty page or something because I it's not fall here. It's actually spring. It'll be a while before I have fall pictures to scrap again. But anyway, it's a good way to get things used up because they're always out. And so when I'm looking for something, I'll go to that spot first to pull things. Just getting this down, it's nice. I was able to use the dots on this polka dot paper to line that word up to make it really easy. And I uh, put the glue on that and realized, oh wait, I need to ink it first or need to ink it before it goes down. And there's where the diaper pin's going to go, is right there. Now I'm kind of looking at this and realizing that I have nowhere to journal anything. Not that I need a lot of journaling, because this will go in a section of my scrapbooks where there's a lot of photos, but I want something. Plus I decided I really wanted a little bit more behind that bird. And I found this tag with like birth stats on it and decided I really liked that. But once I did that, then I had this kind of awkward gap right there. So I moved that little epoxy circle up just so that it goes, so that it covers that gap. And I almost put that down without inking it, which it I do ink a lot, but it's not always part of my process. So I always have to think about it when I do it. I'm just getting the placement there right so that all of the lines of the bird, the circle, and that tag don't completely line up. So those are down. And I was just looking to see, I want something now to anchor that top cluster. There's two elements there and I want something else. So I'm going back to the six by six pad to see if I can find anything there. There's some small like little journaling pieces and um, letters and that kind of a thing. So I was playing with that to see if that might work. And I was thinking about using that label punch to punch a label, but I wanted to check out some other um, pages in there just in case. And then I ran across this page with the little journaling pieces and decided, oh, that is perfect. That'll be a great shape because 
right now there's a very long element there so I really wanted something a little bit more square and the labels would have been long and rectangular widthwise so I really liked the way that looked when I put that little paper frame there so that's what's going to end up anchoring that cluster up in the top as I said I really don't have that many six by six paper pads but I am enjoying working with this one uh, quite a bit I have one other baby boy collection from Bella Boulevard but um, I was getting tired of using all those papers so when I found this at a closeout store I was like oh fun so now I want to add a little bit more dimension with some enamel dots so I'm going to go through my collection of enamel dots that sit in that little 31 um, bag there and I pulled out a couple of different things I pulled out something from um, Webster a couple things from Webster's pages and then I find these October afternoon pop drops and they are from the under the tree collection and there's just a couple left you uh, not a couple left but there's less than full sheets and I decide you know I could use those I was looking for a minty green as well and that's so I thought I might use some of the green from one of the Webster's pages collections there I don't end up using those I end up only using the blue pop drops so I actually use quite a few of them up here and I'm using my cutter B tweezers there to get them on the page because then they're easy to place looking at different sizes to put on there I am just about done with the layout um, I don't think I told you that the heart punch I believe is from Hobby Lobby if I remember correctly where I got that punch so it's a pretty small punch maybe less than half of an inch I'm just loving the way this came out with that dark paper anchoring everything on the bottom and then some of the lighter patterns on top an easy way to use a six by six pad actually I'm just about done here so at the end there'll be a detail shot and a couple of still shots hope you are all well and I will be back soon with another layout bye